I've been crushing it with Canva for over 10 years. It is the reason I stopped using Adobe Photoshop. I also like to mess around with a lot of coding tools like ChatGPT, Grok Free, and a few others. But recently, Canva introduced Canva Coding. This takes Canva up to new levels because it will generate code and give me a visual representation of that code as well. Now, there are limitations. I will talk about those later on. I'm going to show you just how versatile this is. And seriously, you should consider consider giving it a go. Canva Code was announced about a month ago and it's been slowly rolled out. So some people might not have access to it. I got access about three days ago and I've really been playing with it. Here's how you want to use it. Go into Canva, you log in and then at the top, you should see Canva AI. Now, if you can't see this when you first go into Canva before you've gone and clicked templates or anything like that, that means it hasn't rolled out to you yet. And like I said, this was announced a month ago and I only got access to it. I am in the UK about three days ago. I'm going to click Canva AI and it takes me to a new area. Now, before you start looking at everything that you see down here, my recommendation is that you click the option called code for me and you have a pane for prompting. And then it starts to say to her, what do you want to build? And it's already got some examples down here, like an interactive certificate. But if you just scroll down, it now gives you an idea of what you could create. Take a look at this one down here called Color Accessibility Stimulator. So what I did was because I wasn't too sure about how far can we push Canva coding and what will it actually generate for us, I went and clicked this. Now I'm going to show you what I've already done because I don't want to sit through all of the prompts I did. But I just want to give you an idea. If I was to go and click this, this is like if you wanted to create like a color accessibility simulator. If you want to assess the color contrast with a WCAG 2.1 AA standard, if you were using this prompt, you would click submit and it would start to generate the code and the visual representation of that. This is the big thing about this. I don't know some of you are going to say, but we've got other apps like Lovable, Bolt, Cursor and many more. But this is a little bit different. And I think this could go places. I think from what we get at the moment, there are limitations, but I can definitely see this expanding. So let's say you go and hit submit. It starts to write the code for you. Now, I'm not going to make you sit through all of this. OK, I'm going to show you what did it do when I first did this. So I'm going to hit the arrow over here to go back a step. And this is something you do want to take notice of. So let's say you have been actively using this and now you want to re-access maybe a bit of code it generated for you. And I know you're thinking, hang on, you just broke the code. You didn't even show as the output. I am going to show you what it had done. Just one little tip. If you do create any code, what you want to do is come back into Canva AI. So as a reminder, when you're in your normal Canva area, you got to click Canva AI and you got to click code for me. This is where you need to be if you want to access your previous prompts or projects that you were coding up. What you then click is the navigation bar and now you will see all of your previous prompts. So I'm going to jump over to this one here, which is color accessibility. So this is the very first one that I went and clicked because I was a little bit unsure. I thought, well, can I create anything I want? How far can we push this? So let me now show you. This is what it had originally done. Let's click version one. And I know it's not the prettiest thing. You're going to say, I really don't like those colors. But what it did is it took the prompt where we're looking at visual impairments and we're trying to assess the color contrast. And it created this. So if I go and click this blue color and I pick a different color and hit simulate, it now starts to tell me like, are these colors compliant? And if not, what are the alternatives I can use? But here's the really clever bit. Based on that prompt, not only did it generate this massive bit of code, but it also created the simulator for these conditions. This is now showing me what a user with one of these conditions would actually see based on my colors. Have you ever seen anything like this be created for you in such a dynamic way? If we go back to the normal vision and it says that I'm failing for the secondary and the accent, I'm going to go and use the alternate colors. And when I pick them, it basically swaps them out. I can go in and change my background color and then it's going to tell me if I'm still passing or failing. I can hit simulate again and it's going to tell me, am I passing or not? But if I wanted to adapt this, 
I went and then said, can we add a few more words about what each of these conditions are? And this is what it created. And by the way, if you look at the prompt, I did say, can we do it so I don't have to scroll up and down too much? So now when I hover over the conditions, I get a description. So if I wanted to further refine this, maybe the background color or the descriptions or anything that is showing on here, maybe even the color of the buttons when you hover over them, you could stick it in your prompt and it's going to generate the code. Now, when I first did this, when I showed you the color accessibility, when I clicked in, it started writing the code. You could see the code. When it gets to the bottom of the code, you are transported over to this pane where you get to see the result. And anytime you then give in a new prompt, you will see the code again, and then it takes you back over here. But what if I want the code? Because I want to stick that code into ChatGPT, or another solution because I now want to use some other AI to modify it. Or I want to stick this code onto an actual web page. This is the first limitation. You can't get to the code. So when it writes it, once it brought you over here, that's it. You can't see the code and it doesn't matter where you click. But here's the thing, you can get the code. What you do is when it's giving you the output, just click anywhere on the page and go down to where it says view frame source. And when you do that, you will now get all of the code it wrote for that frame. So this is what it generated, right? If there was any HTML, if there was any styling, or if there was any JavaScripting as well, it gives you all of that. What you then do is copy that. I've jumped over to WordPress and you could use that code anywhere where you can dump some HTML. I'm going to create a brand new page. I'm going to add in a HTML widget and then I will paste in that code. I'm going to hit publish and then I'm going to go and do a preview. By the way, we are using Elementor, but like I said, you can go and dump that code anywhere where you have access to drop in HTML codes. So there it is. And it's not exactly the same because I've just dumped it in. I, I need to modify some of the styling or I may have some presets styling on my website. Think about that. Now that you've got the code, you could tinker with it, a chat GPT AI solution and go, right, when I'm viewing this, the descriptions aren't full, can we modify it? But the Canva code gave me something whereby I've now got something to work with. And I know you're going to say, but I could use Lovable or Bolt or something like that. This is really, really good. And yes, it all still works, right? Look, if I hit simulate, look, the colors change. And just by doing this blew my mind as to the possibilities of where we could take this. But before I show you a couple of other examples that I really think you should take note of, I want to just discuss the limitations. So the first one is you couldn't access the code, but I've shown you that you can access the code because you just go and right click and view frame source and you will get all of the code. So anyone that goes, oh, well, we can't get the code. Yes, you can. You can add in further prompts. You can even hit the microphone and talk to your computer or your microphone and it will take your speech into the prompt and do what it needs to do. But one of the limitations is that you can't add in what I call references. So maybe you've already seen a simulator or a form or something and you want to generate something. Don't forget, you can create timelines on here. There's so much you can do. So you've got like a reference picture. Maybe it's got a load of brand colors. You can't import that into here yet. And if I go back over to the prompt, there is a plus sign, but you can't add any media. Now, I think that is going to come soon. I'm pretty sure that this is like phase one and then eventually we'll get the ability to do that because I would love to import like say you got a PDF document say you've already got some code that you've written with chat GPT and it might be like 2000 lines long I've got loads of codes and stuff I've done the pix refiner the PDF viewer they are very chunky if you try and copy that and paste it in you're going to hit a limitation. And just to make the point, if I go back to the color accessibility and I try and paste the code in here, you can see 10851, 4000 is the limit, the amount of characters you can use. So once we have the ability to import, say, PDFs or Word documents or paste more code, that will make this even better. Imagine you've already got a bit of code somewhere, right? And you now want this to help visualize it in the way Canva can. The other limitation is that even when it has generated its output, and let's go back to version two of the color accessibility, I can't drag anything in. So on the left hand side, I've got like templates and all of this, and there'll be other apps. And, you know, I can't actually drag in like a bit of clip art or another image from down here. Maybe there's a style with some branding. 
Maybe I just want to, for instance, click this and change the text sizing. I mean, isn't that what was really good about Canva in the first place? You create a template or a poster or a document or cover art for your YouTube video and you change the font and you move things around and you can layer it. You can't do that here. And again, I would be really surprised if Canva won't unleash that on us at a later date. I think they're just testing the water, checking how people respond to this and any feedback. So Canva, if you're listening, we desperately need that because I would love to be able to add in a background image or something like that, or maybe drop in, I don't know, whatever I want, an icon, for instance. Of course, you could use the prompting. You know, you could prompt it to say, can we add in an icon? And it will do. But then what if you want to modify that icon later on or you want to use one that's part of your company branding or very specific for your website? Third thing, and I've kind of already alluded to how, you know, it will take your prompt and it will generate what it wants, is that it's not perfectly perfect, okay? So I said, let's try and create an interactive US map. And I want you to, like, tell me some details, keep it basic, okay? Don't worry, I will change the details. But I want to have the United States of America and I want every state in there to be hoverable. And when I hover over it, I want you to then give me the details about the state. And this is what it went and created. This is the first thing it did. And it went and created another version where nothing appeared. So it was trying to create the states, but it just wasn't working. And I feel like this is where you could use another AI tool to get the best possible bit of code you can. And then you could hopefully dump it into here. But like I said, you're limited to 4,000 characters at the moment. But you should not use any of those limitations I've mentioned to not use this because there were two really good examples for how this could be super useful for you. A while ago, I released a video on how you can add a font clamp calculator to your WordPress website. You went and dumped this into code snippets that you can get for free from the WordPress repository, and it would add this to your WordPress sidebar. Now, it doesn't look amazingly fantastical, but it works, okay? You go in, you can change your units, you can switch between pixel or REM, you go and add in your minimum, maximum values, and how big you want your fonts to look when you go from desktop to tablet to mobile and all of that. And once you've picked your values or added them in, you hit generate CSS and it gave you a bit of code. But I went and refined the way I wanted my CSS to code to look. And if you've been following the Elementor website course or the CSS course or other videos, where I've tried to make it easier for you to create your global styling for your font, you'll know what I mean. Well, this is what I did. I took my CSS, I went over to Canva coding, and I told it what I wanted, and I even pasted the format of my CSS code. So rather than taking the entire code snippet, I took the output and I said, go and present that in a nicer way. This is a reminder of what I had before when you had the ability to copy the codes down here. And this is what it gave me. So I can switch between pixel and REM. I can set my root HTML. I can set my minimum viewpoint and my maximum. And I could go down here and pick any of the classes and I could go and change the value. And if I go and pick this one here and I say it's going to be 8 REM, you can see how big it is. I mean, that looks ugly big now, but it just modified it for you and the code here would change as well. You can see that there. Now, that was a good start, but I found it quite ugly. So I then said, I actually want to see all of the sizes and it went and generated this. And, and this is how funky it is. So we've gone from this version to this version. So I did some further refinement and created this. You can click add size. If I go and create XXXXX small, I hit save. Can you see it over there? It's going added it in for us and I can add in as many as I want. That's the power of the Canva code that we have, but I wasn't satisfied. I didn't want to stick this on a page. I wanted to stick it in a code snippet and add it to your WordPress sidebar. So I asked it, and it struggled. It really wasn't good at generating a code snippet. But remember what I said, you right click and get the frame source. There's the code for everything. It's just visually done for us. I stuck that code into chat GPT. I asked it to do a few extra other things for me and put it into a code snippet. And this is what we get. And you're going to say, well, that looks exactly the same as what you just showed us. Well, you now have an X. So if you go and add in another class, I'm going to call it what, and we'll make it be a 10 and we'll go for a 15 like that and hit save. It is now there. And if you click on any one of these, when you click it, it hovers the relevant one and the value down here will change for you to go and copy that particular CSS, or you can click 
copy all and get all of them. You can hit the X now to completely get rid of that particular line. And here's the really other funky bit. If I go and pick X small, I can now rearrange it as well. If I change my minimum width to be 250 and I refresh this page, it remembers every value and everything you do. This is so much better visually and it was thanks to Canva coding. Because a lot of us, we create our code snippets and then, you know, you almost go with what you want. And then you do a bit of styling. But with Canva code, I had the code. I then used ChatGPT to refine it. Sorry, let me go back a step. I used Canva code to get the code and the visual representation. I tinkered with it to get it to be better in terms of what it showed and how it showed it. I then used ChatGPT and I only did a couple of prompts. I didn't sit there going for like four or five hours of work. No, it was just a couple of prompts, stuck it into a code snippet. And now it's visible on my WordPress website. For me, if you're liking what I did here, smash the like button. But I didn't stop there. I went and did something else with it. I went and created a web design quote calculator as well. So I kind of gave it an idea of what I wanted the calculator to do. You know, I want the user to be able to pick certain items. I want the color to change and I want it to like give me an end price. So here's version one of what it created. So from the get go, I'm telling you a basic website will cost you one and a half thousand dollars. If you want the e-commerce functionality, there's another two thousand. You hit calculate quote and it's now going to tell you what is the estimated cost and it gives you a summary. But I was not satisfied and I wanted to go a step further. We got to this version. So it starts off at 1,500. And if I now increase that to be six, it tells you that there's an extra 225. But look over here. That 800 has now become 900 because there's $100 per extra page. You want to do e-commerce? It starts to break it all down for you. I took that code. I stuck it into chat GPT. I then told it I'm going to use an elemental form. What extra do I need to make the items you pick there feed into the form? When you pick any of these items, and I'm just going to go for these at the moment, just those, that, yeah, we'll go. For, in fact, let's just go for all of them. And the total cost is 7,075 now. And I enter in some details and I click this button. These are the details that I got. And you can also set it up to go to the user as well. So they get a copy as well. That was with Canva code and a bit of chat GPT to give me some extra little bit of code to link into my elemental form. And I would not have imagined creating anything like this if I didn't have Canva code. Does this just blow the door open on what you could start to do when you start to use your imagination? This has just come out. We're still in the early years of Canva coding. I can't wait to see how this evolves and where it goes. It's gonna be pretty damn fun. I'm Imran from Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you soon.